Today's video, we are going to talk about these. The herbs that you can buy in the supermarket. And basically, I refer to these as gateway drugs. So, the thing is, right, you can buy loads of these herbs in the supermarket, like actual live plants, right? And all the supermarkets do them. And I think loads of people start off with this. This is how loads of people get into gardening. They buy these and the excitement of having fresh herbs for your cooking and things, I think that's what gets some people into actually gardening and growing their own veg and things. But there is one thing with these that I find, and I know other people do because I've actually been asked about this. What you find is you get these gorgeous, amazing, big, bushy, just plants that just really grab you. You see them in the supermarket and you're like, oh my God, that's awesome. And then you get it home and pretty much they die really quickly. Um, and before they die, they start to look really quite sickly and poorly and stuff. So today, let's talk about how we can keep these little guys alive. Okay, and this is the thing. It's dead, dead easy. Three, three, that's not three, either. three simple steps. And you can keep all your little pots of herbs alive that you bought in the supermarket. And you can have fresh herbs going, okay. I'm going to take these out of the packet, actually. You get them in these bags with whatever supermarket you shop in's branding. Okay. And here's the thing. Look at this. So I've got the GoPro going again so I can show you guys close-ups. But the reason that looks so luscious and massive and, and really, really healthy is because it's actually a trick. The guys that grow these, they want you to see it in the supermarket shelf and think it's amazing and want to buy it. So what they do is they actually sow maybe 20 or 30 seeds in each pot. Um, and that's what that is. That's actually like 20, maybe 30 actual little plants in that one pot, okay? And this is the main reason that they actually die on you because all of those little plants in there, they're all fighting for all the nutrients that are in this tiny little pot and all the water that's in this tiny little pot. Okay, and they're all competing with each other and you'll see that they all get really tall and leggy because they're all fighting for what little light there is and these big leaves are all covering whatever one's under it so the one that's under it tries to get taller again and stuff so that's why these guys struggle so the first thing you want to do when you come home okay if you're like me is just smell them because oh you can't beat the smell of herbs but when you go home sorry what I want you to do is get them out of the pot, okay? So just press them up from the bottom, squeeze the sides, okay, and take it out. And you can see there, look at that. Look at all those roots. There's loads of roots. They're all going mad, round and round and round, desperately trying to find some nutrients and some water. So what we're going to do is quite gently, okay, and this if you don't do this kind of thing a lot, it's going to be a wee bit scary, but just trust Auntie Eli on this one here, okay? You're going to hear the roots ripping, as long as each of your plants has a decent amount of rootstock, it will be fine, okay? It is going to have to tear them, but hopefully that should then get that sort of to go, oh, I need more roots and grow more, okay? So we're going to try, try I can't speak, but we're going to try and split these all up into all the individual plants, okay? Now I'm doing it with a basil. You can, I've got here uh, chives and thyme and rosemary just because uh, the lovely Mrs A went and grabbed these at the supermarket for me yesterday, just so I could show you guys. But you'll get all sorts and you'll get parsley and all that kind of thing. And it's the same sort of thing with most of them. So we're going to break it up, okay? And like I said, it's a bit scary, but it's okay. Just gently try and tease it. It'll come away naturally, okay, where there are plants. So don't worry. It won't tear in a bit that it doesn't want to tear in. Now, you might not be able to get them all in single, but even if you can just get them split into like one or two, that will still make a difference. Here we go. And like I say, you'll feel it where it wants to part and where it doesn't. And also, bonus, you paid for one plant, but actually look at the amount of different hair plants you're getting. You're getting loads, okay? So I've got some other pots. I am going to give each of these little guys the same size a pot again, okay, but to each of them, so that's how much space each one will have. And all I'm doing, filling it with some soil, okay, and what I want to do is bury them up to the same level as they were buried before, okay, not deeper, to the same level. 
because herbs are quite susceptible to their leaves and their stems getting wet and they rot very easily. Okay, and I'm going to press that down to just make sure these guys are getting as much support as possible. Doing my best. And then that's one done. Okay. Now you can see what I mean about how leggy they are. Look at these poor wee guys. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to repot all of them. And then we'll do the next bit. So three steps I said. So number one, separate them. Number two, repot them. Just on a note, while I'm repotting these, okay, make sure the pot you use has got holes in it for drainage, okay? That's really, really important. Um, I know with a lot of you guys, you're going to want to put these indoors, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And because they're indoors, you're going to want them to have nice pots, you know, like attractive pots. Um, but even if you are doing that, please be aware they do need to have holes in the pot for drainage. But if you don't want that pot to be the one that's visible, that's okay. What you can do, and you'll see lots of people do this for house plants, is you can then put this pot inside another pot with just like little, um, little risers, little feet I call them, um, underneath it to give it some space so the water can drain away. Okay, and um, what I'll do is I'll link up, look I've got the hang of this now, I know it's always left, 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 even though I'm rubbish for left and right, but I'll put a wee link up, um, I did a video about the little pot feet, the little risers, which I don't have any to hand to show you I'm afraid, um, but they're just little discs that you can put in and it holds it up, so that way you could put it in a pretty pot in the house. Okay, and there we go. So. That's us all potted up and look at the amount of plants we got out of that one little pot, okay? So that's one and two. Number one, separate them out because there's actually loads of plants in there, okay? Too many for that little pot and they're dying because they're competing to get nutrients and water and light, okay? So separate them out. Number two, rehome them, okay? So we're putting them in a nice new pot. Anna mentioned you want it to have drainage holes in the bottom, okay? so that the water can get out. Really important. So get them all nice new compost in their nice new pots. Um, and this is the point where you panic about where the hell am I going to put all these herbs now? You thought you were just going to have one nice neat little pot in the windowsill, didn't you? But that leads me on nicely to number three, okay? And it's about where you put these and how you look after them. Because we've given them these nice new pots, new compost, they're going to love it. But you need to know a little bit about each of your herbs to know where to put it. Because I mentioned before, I'm going to sh take this one just because it's so leggy and I want you to see. Right, basil. Basil is a Mediterranean herb. Um, so are things like rosemary uh, and oregano and those types of things. That means they want a lot of sun. So you need to put these either on a sunny window ledge or in the greenhouse, okay? Um, the other thing with these is these will not cope outside of my garden, okay? In Scotland, it's just not hot enough and dry enough. These guys will get drowned with the rain and with the chilly nights and stuff, it kills them off. And I know this because I've tried to grow basil in the garden. So these, either your greenhouse or a really sunny window ledge, okay? And also with Mediterranean herbs, they don't like loads of water, okay? So water sparingly. So what you do is give it a good water enough Soak it enough so that water is draining out, okay? Leave it, let it all drain, and when it's finished draining, then put it in your window ledge, wherever it's going to go, and leave it until it dries out again, okay? Now, obviously, you don't want the plants to totally will over because you don't want to put them under that stress, but you don't want this soil to be damp when you next water it again either, okay? So just keep an eye on them water sparingly. Okay. Uh, the last thing to do, as always, whenever you repot any plants, is give them a really good water, a proper good soak, okay? And then what we're going to do is I'm going to give these guys a couple of weeks to just settle in and be okay. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is how you actually prune these guys. So when you want leaves for cooking, how you do that so that it encourages your basil plant to get bushy instead of being this big long leggy plant. And that way you get loads and loads of leaves off it. So... Gateway drugs, enjoy. If you've bought these guys, that's how you can make them healthy and keep them going. Um, and for the rest of you guys who, for this is old hat, 
hey, if you're like me and your herbs haven't taken yet, it's a quick way of getting some herbs. Right, guys, see you.